Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. We're just going to give it a couple more minutes before we get started just to let some people join, but we will start at about two after the hour. All right, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, which is going to focus on Cognos and how we can use IBM process mining uh, with that existing footprint to make uh, our analytics, our data, and our um, insight into that information that much better. Uh, my name is Jared Michalik. I'm VP of Innovation and AI Applications at Salient Process, a true blue business partner. I'm joined by Michael Hines, who's America's Senior Business Automation Leader from IBM. Uh, and today, again, we're going to uh, hit on our part two of this series. If you joined us last week, we covered some basics around Cognos and IBM process mining. Uh, we do want to uh, rehash some of that today. So if you joined last week, you are going to get some of the same information because we had some folks that couldn't join uh, or some folks that uh, couldn't get into the meeting last week. So we're um, very excited to, uh, to kind of cover that, but also go into more detail about how it works and talk a little bit more about planning analytics, which is another piece to the puzzle, and then talk a little bit about uh, prescriptive process mining. Michael's going to cover that towards the end of the session, uh, which is a very exciting innovation from IBM that is going to plug into the existing process mining story. Um, also, if you have any questions or thoughts or feedback, please put those in the chat. Uh, as we go through, we'll have plenty of time towards the end of the session to cover some Q&A. And with that, I'm excited to get us started. So let's talk about the agenda. Um, we're going to go through uh, some basic information here, talk a little bit about why, why we're we talking about this, why is this exciting, why do we think this is uh, something that many existing Cognos customers will, will benefit from. Uh, we want to go into a little bit more of an overview of what is Cognos, what is planning analytics, if you're not already familiar. Uh, Michael's going to cover uh, some of the basics and some of the talking points on why process mining. What is it? How does it work? Why is it important? We'll go into a, a very brief solution overview, talking about how this works in practice, some of the technical details there. And then a good portion of, of today's webinar is going to be focused on live demonstration. Uh, so we're going to hit on both the IBM Cognos and planning analytics and what that can do, but then really focusing in on how we can use that data and especially that existing data in a process mining story. We're then going to wrap it up with uh, a, a quick overview on the prescriptive process mining capabilities, and then we'll open it up for questions. So with that, let's talk about the problem statement. Why do we think this is a good idea? Why do we think this is important? There's a lot of different ways that organizations can leverage their data. Uh, we can look at this as uh, kind of traditional BI dashboards and reports. We can use it to uh, analyze information to make our messaging and make the user's experience that much more customized. Uh, we can use it for forecasting, predictive analytics, um, operational efficiency, all the way through you know, mapping, geospatial analytics, 
looking at uh, how we can manage our risk and compliance and regulatory information, looking at feedback from customers and using that to make that customer experience even better. Uh, supply chain is a huge one, uh, looking at how we can make that more efficient, make that better and, and run smoother. Uh, and then even health and safety. And these are just the top 10 that, um, that, that we can think about, but the possibilities are endless. Data is king, data is out there. And what we're gonna talk about today is how we can leverage that data in new and interesting ways to make our actions, to make our insights that much more impactful. And what I wanna do is kind of boil that, the, the possible use cases of how we use data into three buckets, three larger perspectives, right? First, we have, where are we, right? Where are we right now? Tell me, you know, what is the thing I need to pay attention to? What are the, uh, uh, what's the temperature of the business? Where are my pain points? Right, just getting that information in real time and having that presented in insightful and intuitive ways. Second is where are we going? So now that I know where I am, I can start to plan and start to predict what are some of the choices that I can make and what kind of impact does that have on my future um, uh, temperature, right? On my future efficiencies. Uh, and so knowing where we're going is, is a huge piece to that. But then we also have how did I get here, right? Which can use historical or real-time data to really start to build models and understand what are all the things that led up to this point. And these are three different ways that we can look at that data. And as such, we have three different tools that we can bring to bear that can integrate with one another, right? Because the where are we, the current state, the information that I'm getting today, this is my Cognos analytics, right? This is how I have my dashboards, reports, visualizations, very powerful, very useful, um, and, and that's a, a big portion of the, the data story, but it's not the only one, right? Looking at the future and even leveraging AI to start to do predictive modeling and understand what kind of impact would changes or a new product or a change in price, what, would that, what kind of impact would that have on my future information? That's where planning analytics comes in, and we'll talk about how that works uh, and some of the examples of, of why that's important. And then finally, we have how did I get here, right? Using process mining to build a story, build a chain of events, build a process based on historical and real-time data to really layer into that, to understand root cause analysis and understand all of the, the things that, that feed into why do I have more complaints in California versus New York, right? Why is that happening? And why is my uh, shipping getting stuck in this one spot? You know, is it based on... Uh, certain products? Is it based on certain vendors? Is it based on certain weather conditions? What are the contributing factors to why I got uh, in this situation, right? So all three of these play an extremely important role and they can all be integrated and used together as we'll see in the demonstration. So let's talk a little bit about what is IBM Cognos Analytics? What is IBM Planning Analytics? These are two important aspects of our data and AI story. And Cognos is really the BI side of things, right? The business intelligence showing me the state of my business today. What is happening? Where do I need to pay attention to? What is red? What is green? Uh, and we can look at this from some different uh, ownership and, and entry points for users where it can come at the consumer or the end, kind of the, the customer point of view. We can come at it at a business analyst point of view where I'm looking for more uh, understanding, better understanding of, of my current data. We can look at this as a data scientist and start to build models and understand more about the, you know, what's happening uh, in the current situation. And then we can also author and manage and create new dashboards and visualizations. And so we have these different entry points, but they can all be used in conjunction. And we have this kind of infinite loop of use, usability where we're continually improving, continually to monitor and manage our current state of the business, right? We can also, of course, infuse AI into this in some different um, perspectives. So one is through natural language processing to inquire about the data, to understand more about the data and ask questions based on, you know, conversational type techniques that I can pull information out without having to run SQL reports or having to code something behind the scenes, I can actually interact with the data in intuitive ways. 
It is also turbocharging the performance. So understanding you know, that this is a lot of information that's being collected and managed and curated. And so waiting for five minutes for a dashboard to show up is not acceptable, right? We have to have this information at our fingertips. It has to load within a, a, at most a couple seconds to, to be able to have the accessibility and to be able to pivot and look at that information. And so using AI to really push that performance uh, barrier is extremely important. And then scaling out to much larger uh, sources of information, but doing it in a safe and predictable way. So using things like Watson X AI govern, uh, Watson X governance um, to really curate and uh, make that a more predictable and safe set of information, making sure that I don't have biased information or that I'm pulling information from safe sources. So there's a lot of AI going into that. And just thinking about some of the other uh, aspects of, uh, of Cognos Analytics is looking at how we can um, really start building out these reports. That's kind of the core functionality, getting that visualization, getting that real-time uh, dashboards, using things like KPIs, SLAs, to really understand how does it actually relate to the business? Is this good? Is this bad? That's all relative. We need to have our other stakeholders and, and inputs into that from, uh, from other sources doing that discovery side of things, being able to pull out information and tease that information um, in a very interactive and very intuitive way. Uh, and then finally, being able to embed these reports, dashboards into other sources and really to help streamline that decision-making process to make better decisions based on the data, and based on uh, the insights that th that data is giving us. Now on the flip side, so now we, right now we have this is how things work right now. How do you know that your changes are going to have an impact in the future, right? Or what kind of impact those changes would have? Uh, and so adding a new product or making a change to, um, to a price or adding inventory or staffing up for the holiday rush, those can have a positive impact, but how do you know for sure what type of impact that's going to have? This is where planning analytics is going to come into play. So just thinking about um, having the ability to uncover insights and also use existing data to predict future outcomes. Uh, and, and so being, being able to um, adjust your forecasting, adjust your business plans uh, as you start to see some of the, um, the models show you what, what the possibilities are, uh, being able to work with others and bring data in um, from other sources, being able to merge those together, integrate plans, because a lot of times, if you, even though changing something or adding something to the business is going to have a positive impact to one department, does not necessarily mean that it's going to have a positive impact to another. You may actually cause more problems in downstream processes by making uh, some of these changes. So using information from multiple sources and multiple departments is going to be huge. And then really being able to make those decisions faster is another big piece to this, right? So we can make more confident decisions, but we're also doing making those um, those changes faster, uh, and that's going to help just get to the good stuff faster, right? We're going to have um, better impacts on on in the long run. So just thinking about some use cases or some benefits of planning analytics, uh, scale is huge, right? Again, we're talking about large amounts of information, large amounts of data, so being able to scale this out to the larger uh, larger data sets is going to be extremely important. Um, it also pushes some of this uh, management and planning to sources that existing users are used to, like Excel spreadsheets. Uh, so actually interacting through a familiar interface using plugins from planning analytics makes it so that they're not having to learn a new tool, right? They're still using those, uh, those existing data sources, but now it's really kind of charging those uh, and adding capabilities with those plugins so that you can push that data to the next level. Um, and it has a number of out-of-the-box pieces that allow us to um, kind of not have to start from scratch so we can build out new uh, or existing um, models and uh, dashboards and reports. And so we're not doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting. We can kind of modify some of the pre-built assets and turn those into uh, much faster and much more timely forecasts. And then everything is 
in one place, right? We have all of this information in a single IBM supported tool so that it's familiar, it's understandable, and we can uh, we don't have to go through a lot of training to be able to use um, this tool in addition to some of the other technologies that IBM has. And just a few of those benefits here, um, again, performance is huge, right? Not having to sit there for 20 minutes waiting for a report or some kind of predictive model to run, uh, being able to do self-service is, is very important. We don't want to have to rely on data analysts and, um, and BI specialists to build our reports for us. They're gonna play an important role in some of the more sophisticated models, but for some of the more um, kind of everyday models that we wanna to put together and kind of trial and error type things, that's gonna be huge, right? Being able to embed this in, um, in a web interface is, makes it much more intuitive, intuitive, much more accessible. We can scale it as we go. Again, that Microsoft Excel integration, while we do wanna move people away from spreadsheets if we can, a lot of times we have no choice and we wanna put this in a place where it's familiar so that users will actually use it. Uh, and so by embedding that in, in Excel as an optional um, data source is gonna be really important. Um, and then, you know, security governance, this is IBM, right? And, and really getting the benefits from, um, from all those places is, is gonna be big. All right, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Michael to go through some of the background on the process mining side. Uh, and again, if you have any questions along the way, please do include those in the chat and, um, and we'll, uh, we'll answer those when we get to the Q&A session at the end. All right, perfect. Well, thanks, Jared. Um, and just to, before we move on to process mining, you know, everything that Jared's talked about it is really, give me a second here, is really about you know what why customers are leveraging Cognos Analytics and planning analytics. It's really to you know leverage the data that our organizations are collecting in order to make more you know better informed business decisions, if you will, when it matters most at the right time. And so when we're thinking about process mining, I think it's important to understand you know process mining is going to do the exact same thing, but with a little bit different twist. And so. Process mining, where it fits in, is really in helping you get additional insights prior to the data getting to planning and analytics. Because I'm sure as everyone online has heard, you know, many times over the, the, the last several years, it's garbage in, garbage out a lot of times. So the reality is we can, the Cognos and planning analytics or any tool that we're leveraging to gain insight is only as good as the underlying data. So where process mining comes in and fits in, if you will, is really at a parent level of, of understanding the, the process data behind the scenes. So when we think about it in a business transformation or digital transformation perspective, we have to look at what problems are every company, has every company been experiencing for years, if not decades, which is they're investing money, they're trying to gain more insight into how their operations are actually working so we can pivot, so we can reduce cost complexity, increase innovation while mitigating risk, you know, identifying new opportunities while improving overall experience. And so the, the reality is that organizations today and for decades now have been investing, but they, these investments have helped us you know, move the needle. We're gaining ground as far as um, automating our, our operations, but the reality is today, 78% of business transformation or digital transformation initiatives are failing to meet the objectives that the business expected or someone within the organization set out. And even of the 22%, which are deemed to be successful, again, they're typically well past deadline and well over budget. So where does this fit in? It, it fits into when we're thinking about planning and analytics, how do we move the needle? How do we you know, get insights that help us, you know, essentially avoid the challenges that organizations are having today. So when we, so from IBM's perspective, there are many reasons that this is happening. You always hear about people processing technology or the challenges, all true. But at a parent level, lack of visibility is from IBM's perspective, why we're having these challenges with achieving the digital transformation or business transformation objectives. And 
I, I think this this visual does a nice job of just outlining the perspective of you can't fix, you can't improve what you can't see. So when we're thinking about it from a Cognos or planning and analytics perspective, we're reliant upon that data. Um, we're, reliant, we're relying upon the insights that it provides us to to move the needle, if you will. You know, we're only as good as what we can see. So when we're thinking about the uh, the initiatives that we're working on, where that be back office modernization, something in a supply chain, if you're looking to improve customer operations in general sense, you know, we we typically we bring in industry experts, outside consultants, we throw solutions at these challenges, and yet we're not achieving the objectives that we set out. So when we look at the underlying root of, of this challenge is how we're designing business processes. So when we're thinking about how we design business processes, you know, you, you typically bring together your subject matter experts, process owners, lean teams, and sometimes, you know, those industry experts with, with unique knowledge. And when we're thinking about end to end processes, again, think about how operations are working, you know, how do we improve those? We, we really, you know, we need to understand where the bottlenecks exist. So these industry experts, you know, subject matter teams and, and uh, the, the people who are modeling and mapping these processes, they're getting together for a series of interviews, whiteboards, sticky notes. At the end of the day, they're designing straight through processes or what we call a happy path, like you see in number one. Anyone who's had experience in modeling mapping, especially when it comes to end-to-end -end complex processes, they understand that there's a little variation to the process, but yet the variation they feel like is manageable and not necessarily hindering overall process performance. The challenge comes in when 100% of the time we think about end-to-end -end complex processes, they actually operate and flow like you see in number three. And the fact that organizations have no visibility into this, or if you look at all the, the black dots which are intended to represent the hidden inefficiency within the processes, the fact that they have no visibility into this, this is what's contributing back to that 78% digital transformation failure rate, or at least failure to achieve the objective set out. And so recently I was at a Gardner conference and Gardner's benchmark this. So what they're saying is this design state, as you see in, in number one or number two, they say in, in year one, due to the complexities and in ever-changing processes and uh, and when you go to join those with other sub processes, they're actually best case scenario in year one, 46% accurate. And think about it, this is, these are the processes or the models that we're leveraging in all of our workflows and our decisions tools throughout our organization, which is feeding the Cognos and planning analytics tools with the information. So again, when I, earlier I talked about, you know, garbage in, garbage out, we're reliant upon the, the information we're receiving. So where process mining comes in is it actually helps give you that visibility. So just to give an example, if we look over to the left-hand side, this is just an example of a procure to pay process or a P2P process. And what we're here to, to demonstrate is just to execute an order. That order is gonna have to run through a multitude of different systems and desktop tasks, typically follow hundreds to thousands of different paths and at the end of the day, the processes just aren't performing well. So when we think about this from a Cognos or planning and analytics perspective, again, we're relying upon that data. But what's happening throughout this process is we put more solutions in place. We're creating a, an, an area that's right for you know, data silos or master data being out of sync, sync between all these different systems. And so when organizations typically think they have good visibility into you know, how their processes are working, what they typically are referring to, let's just take SAP as an example. Maybe they, that's their primary ERP system. They feel like they have good visibility into the four walls of their ERP system, which is feeding all their Cognos and their planning analytics tools. But the reality is, as this diagram illustrates, that order has to run through a multitude of different systems. So this is where the challenges are coming up. And if you think about the employees having to log in to 10 to 19 different applications just to execute an order, you find a lot of duplicates in the system, a lot of errors. Uh, this is right for rework and, and loopbacks, if you will. So this is the challenge that every organization is experiencing today. And where we see the missing link for bridging the divide between the information that Cognos Planning Analytics is getting today that people are leveraging to make informed business decisions 
is leveraging process and task mining. And the, the objective of process and task mining collectively together is to create a digital twin of how your processes are flowing. If you look back at the spaghetti diagram, if you will, number three that I just talked about, the reality is process and task mining are leveraged to create a precise data-driven perspective of how your processes flow, of where all the hidden inefficiency exists uh, within your processes, the root causes of that hidden inefficiency, and then leveraging machine learning AI, what's the recommended path forward? You know, what action should we take? Should we automate certain steps of this? Should we not? So this is where process and task mining come to play. And if you think about organizations, one of the challenges that they are experiencing on a continuous basis is, you know, when we make a tweak to our process, you know, that changes everything, you know, downstream of that process. So when we want to take a look at a digital twin or any analysis of what's going on, we have to do that, you know, every week or every quarter or every month, you know, on a regular basis in order to gain some insight. So let's take a look at how process mining works. So process mining, if you think back to that uh, procure to pay diagram that I had uh, outlined, we're pulling information from those transactional systems like your, your ERPs, your, your work days, your uh, IBM Maximo. Uh, you, we're pulling information from Excel spreadsheets to understand how our processes are flowing. And the details that we're leveraging are uh, the event logs from those systems. So we're looking for the object ID. We're looking for an activity and a timestamp. And with that, process mining is able to create from a digital perspective, how, or more importantly, a data-driven perspective, how your processes are flowing, not how organizations or lean teams or others think that they flow, but how they actually flow. And then from a, uh, your desktop level, where, where we're leveraging Excel spreadsheets or things happening in Outlook or maybe a web portal, we're capturing that detail and creating event logs there to pull that, to pull uh, the transactional event logs as well as the desktop event logs into a core mining engine. And again, leveraging AI machine learning, that's what we do leverage to in order to create that precise digital twin. And from there, where organizations are leveraging this, and this is where the synergy between Cognos planning analytics and process mining converge is understanding the root cause of why challenges are happening. Because if you think about planning uh, Cognos, it's going to report on what happened. Planning analytics is going to allow you to make some forecasting as to what we need to do you know, going forward to improve the business. But what's missing in between is why something's happening. I think earlier Jared mentioned, you know, if I have a supply chain network and you know, I'm comparing New York to LA and want to find out you know, why is one outperforming the other, where the hidden inefficiencies or challenges coming in, that's where the root cause analysis from process and task mining come to play. And understanding that and then being able to, to simulate what if scenarios allows us to understand the best course of action to take. So th these together complement the insights and actually only refine the insights that organizations are getting from the planning and analytics tool. So with that said, Jared, I will turn it back over to you to actually show them what it looks like in action. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Uh, um, that was great. Um, I'm just going to take control then. Um, yeah, so let's get to the details, right? How does this work? And uh, I want to show it live and in action as well. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about Cognos and process mining here, but I will also start talking about how we can leverage existing footprints of planning analytics, although a lot of the benefit that we're going to see here is going to be that process mining may be able to feed the data and feed the predictive models that planning analytics is using. So there's always going to be a give and take here. There's going to be a back and forth. But really, the, one of the biggest reasons why we see this as a great use case is that the data is already there. One of the hardest things about IBM process mining or any process mining is getting access to the data. How do we pull that information out? We can do that through APIs, through data dumps, through log files. But if we already have the information available, if we can pull this either through a manual export inside of Cognos or through the API and pull that data out or even go to the direct data source, 
then a lot of the work is already done for us. Uh, once we do that, and we can do that either ongoing or we can do that as a one-time feed, we're going to start setting up things like process visualizations, right? Immediately we will have a visual of the process. You'll see this in the demo. We'll be able to match that with the way that we think it works, right? And having that back and forth of here's the model, here's how it actually works, what did, what did we get right, what did we get wrong, and being able to monitor for conformance and making sure that we're not going off the rails with certain types of process. Being able to do some simulation, right? This is process simulation. It's not predictive analytics necessarily. Uh, we're going to be able to use this information and push that into both Cognos and planning analytics data, and then pulling out insights from that, right? Really understanding what is the root cause? What is the reason that this particular situation is getting stuck? And looking at it, is it based on user? Is it based on vendor? Is it based on geography? Right, just looking at the different inputs and the different data points that we're, using, that we're pulling in to make more intelligent decisions. And then as I said, we can push that back into both Cognos and planning analytics for better curated data. Right? We can even generate reports and dashboards directly into Cognos so that we can have some of that visualization shown in a single place that you can have ongoing monitoring of the process and then feed that back and rinse and repeat, right? And have that, that kind of full loop of all of the data. Some quick benefits that we'll talk about and then I'll jump into the live demo. Um, we talked about access to the existing data. That's a big one, right? And just having that information already readily available. Um, getting that process visibility, that's something that we cannot do today. Um, and being able to kind of pull that data and create a process just from the data, right? Uh, I'll talk about what is required in that data to create that. The root cause analysis is a big one, being able to trace that back, be able to look at what are some of the patterns, what are some of the correlations of the data as, as it relates to the process. Um, finding the process bottlenecks at a glance, right? With, it, with a heat map and with other visualizations, we can see exactly where this process is, is spending most of its time or where it's repeating and churning. And so getting that visibility is, is huge being able to enhance our compliance capabilities. So seeing, are we conforming, are we following the right path or are we going off and doing exceptions and one-offs, one um, right, where that could violate some of our SLAs and some of our compliance requirements. Um, conformance monitoring we talked about uh, and then simulation impact analysis, understanding if I did improve a certain step or I did remove the probability that this is gonna go off the path, what kind of true impact is that going to have on my process? And, and starting to do some, um, some measurement on that side. So with that, let's go ahead and bring up the demonstration. Again, I'm going to talk about Cognos and planning analytics at a high level, and then we'll, we'll dig into process mining. And if there's questions, please do drop them in the chat. So let's start with Cognos. Um, I'm going to start with a policy analysis, right? So we're, we're using an insurance uh, claims example. Actually, I meant to uh, show one intro slide, and we'll talk about this. So the, this customer is currently using Cognos, and, and we'll talk about planning analytics in a moment, but they're using it for claims, for policies, for other business metrics revolving around insurance. Um, what they want to do is really start to dig into the actual process that's happening. What is feeding our Cognos data? Right, understanding why this process is getting stuck at certain steps. Right, if I have a claim, it's very important that I resolve that claim or reject that claim as quickly as possible, both for customer satisfaction, for revenue management, for a number of different uh, procedures. Um, but we can also look at where we can improve. Right, where specifically in this process are the low hanging fruit? Right, where is, where is the best place that I can start addressing some of these efficiency issues without just dumping in RPA or, or throwing in some integrations just for the sake of it, right? We want to do this in a thoughtful and, and really quantifiable way. Uh, and so with that, let's now go back to the demo. Um, so this is our Cognos uh, portal, right? We have a number of different visualizations and reports. Uh, we're focused on the Western states of the US in this example. Uh, and we can start to see very quickly that there are certain situations here where we're looking at different claims and, and complaints and policies and other things. Uh, and I can dig into that. I can pivot on certain um, data points 
So it's very interactive, it's very intuitive, very easy to use, um, and we can drive this with a large amount of data. So again, performance and the curation and the trust of that data is, is a big factor when it comes to both Cognos and planning analytics. Um, and we can start to really interact um, with the information, right? And But what it's not telling me, right, what I can see here is that there are a lot of um, complaints happening in California, but it's down by about a thousand this month. Why? Why is that happening, right? And really understanding what is the process leading up to that? What are some of the pieces that are playing a role in, in those policies? Uh, and then looking at the claims, right? And, and again, looking at it through those different lenses, we can look at it, you know, just in California, I can look at it through Washington. So just changing some of the, the pivot points there and just understanding more about uh, the patterns and activities. And yes, it is still using historical data here, but it's more of a uh, just kind of reporting standpoint where it's giving me some valuable information, but I need more. I need to know why did this spike in, um, in August, right? What are some things that led up to that? What are some data points? What are some of the factors? Uh, and so looking at this from that uh, perspective is going to be really important. So imagine if I were able to take this data, right, the claim data, and export it into a format or set up a real-time feed in the format that process mining can understand. And essentially for process mining to create the process and start to build uh, some of the visualizations and some of that root cause analysis, we need a minimum of three pieces of information. We need a timestamp, we need some kind of an activity name, and we need some kind of a correlation ID to connect the different records in that data. Now that's the minimum. If we had other information, that could make it even more impactful when we start to do the analysis part, right? Things like who worked on it? What employee was working on this claim? How much was the claim for? What state did this claim happen in? Right, those different data points that are gonna give us even more context and more information about the process, but we can start with the minimum. So if I look at the data over here, we'll see that we have those minimum three fields, right? I have a timestamp, I have a step in the insurance process, that's our activity, and then I have a claim ID, which is the unique identifier, so that we look down and we can see different claim numbers going all the way down here, what process mining is gonna do is connect them using that unique ID. One of the powerful pieces of IBM process mining is that we can use different unique IDs on the same data set to build a different process. So imagine in this case that I did it instead of by claim ID that I did it maybe by user. So we can see all the different activities that a certain user would work on. We could do it by customer ID or product ID or other kinds of um, correlations. In our example, we're gonna use claim ID as our unique identifier. Um, but again, we do have a few other fields. Ideally, we have dozens of fields. We can have as many custom fields as we want. That's gonna make our analysis even better. So now let's talk about process finding. In this example, I'm gonna create a brand new use case. We're gonna upload that data that we just saw. And then in a one-time effort, I'm going to set up the mappings of the data. So I say one time because this is something that we only have to do once. I can then continually upload or connect it through the API to create a continuous feed where I have information flowing in. I don't have to remap it every time, right? So you can see we're just setting up some different fields here along with those required fields. And once I do that, I'm ready to generate the process, right? So really three phases to this that we're gonna focus on. The first is the discovery, right? Creation of that process, the visualization of our claims process based on these 77,000 records, which turned into 9,000 unique claims, right? Second phase is the analysis piece, right? Digging into the data, understanding the why. Why does this get stuck here? Why does this take so long? Why does this go down this path instead of this path? And then the third is the ongoing monitoring and the conformance capabilities, the dashboarding that we can do. And then again, pushing that data back into Cognos and pushing that data back into the Cognos analytics or planning analytics information to make better decisions, 
right? So the visual that we see here looks very much like the spaghetti diagram that Michael showed earlier, that, that's step three. And this is pretty typical, right? Because there are a lot of one-offs here. There are a lot of exception paths that are happening, some outliers, right? But we do have the ability to curate this and narrow the scope so that we only see maybe the happy path or the more common path. Uh, what we're seeing here is the darker the blue, the more frequent that activity is occurring. So we can see customer in charge, customer return, those are happening the most often. Um, I can change the lens that I'm looking at. So if I change this to a rework lens, I can see the activities that get hit repeatedly. Uh, and this is gonna help me understand where am I rejecting things? Where am I having to rework things and having it come back and understanding what I can do about that, right? Maybe there's a data validation or maybe there's a user training that I can provide that's gonna help make that more efficient. If I click into one of these, I can start to do some analysis based on the other fields that I've included. So for example, if I look at this by state, I can now see that California has the most, followed by Nevada, Arizona, and I can see the average throughput of each of those. And this is just helping me understand a little bit how the balance of data is happening and, and what are some of the data points. I can look at this by resource, which shows some interesting things here, right? That this one resource is doing 25% of the work on this one activity. They're also taking somewhat uh, less than the next two people. So are they cherry picking? Are they a super user? Are they an expert? What are the reasons why this one user is doing most of the work on this step, right? So using any of those, uh, those pieces of information is really gonna help understand more about the process. We can then take this into a more curated view where I can narrow the scope down to see what is the more common path, right? This is probably what I have documented in my process documentation. It's the more um, kind of narrow scope or the more frequent activities that are occurring. It's still, you know, we still have these exception paths and these rework loops, and that's okay if, as long as we're aware of them and we can start to do something about it, right? What I can do now is turn it on its side look at it as a BPMN diagram, which is now going to be compatible with things like BlueWorks Live and workflow automation and other process tools that understand BPMN, right? This common layer is very helpful in how we start to connect the dots with our automations and with our documentation. Uh, within this, I can start to do discovery of the why, right? We're getting into the analysis phase where I really wanna start digging into why does it go down one path versus the other? Right, if I look at the customer in charge gateways, these are some different patterns where it's going from one step to another, in charge to checkout, that is what we want. And I can see that 98% of the time, it's one of these three resources. So these folks, these employees are doing something right, that they're getting this customer completed and checked out and completing the process. Whereas we look at the in charge to customer return, in charge to customer rejected it's when it's one of these resources, and then the return is happening when it's not one of these folks. And you can start to play with this data and pivot and zoom in and zoom out so we can actually back out of this and look at more or and even zoom into it and see more details, more information about why the process behaves the way it does. From here, I can go into a simulation, start doing impact analysis, understanding some of the, the root cause, and then feeding that into planning analytics, which I'll show you in a moment. And then lastly is that analysis view, right? Looking at all of the possible variants of that process from the most frequent down to the least frequent. And there are hundreds of possible variations to this process. So in other words, there's hundreds of different ways that this process can flow. The most common, 34% of the time, it looks like this. This is our happy path. This is the way that it should work, right? We have the accident, they open a claim, they're in charge, goes to return. Settled, done. But 31% of the time, it looks like this. And then a distant third, 3.4% of the time, it looks like this. So you can see these different patterns and these different variations, and you can monitor them, and you can dig into them to understand for this one claim, what happened. Here are the steps that happened. Here's how long it took. Here are some of the, the, the loopbacks. And so just getting that information, getting a better per picture on that data is really what we're talking about here. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is show you a little bit of planning analytics, because that's, again, the other piece to this. We have these three different components where I'm looking at what's happening, how did we get here, and then of course we have how do we know where to go. 
All right, this is gonna change the use case slightly. I don't have an insurance use case here, but we'll maybe focus in on an electronics company that's looking to add a product. So as someone that's adding a product to an existing set of product lines, um, think of it just like phones or computers or other electronics, I need to know what kind of impact that's gonna have. Right, so here's my historical data. This is all the information that I have leading up to this point. And I can look at it as computers, phones, tablets. So we have a number of different ways to look at this data. And this is just existing data. And what we're gonna do is add a new product and project what kind of impact that's gonna have on my revenue, on my sales, on my cost, and on my product volume. So I'm gonna say this is my new phone. And we give it a price. We give it a price for the direct and for the indirect channel. Actually, I think this is a computer. And once we do that, it's going to take me into some predictive models, right? Where I get can look at some of the raw data and look at different volumes. And it's going to start to project out what kind of revenue, what kind of uh, true bottom line impact that's going to have on my overall product line. And here's where we start to infuse it with some AI to really start to extrapolate out and start to give me real kind of vision into the future of what this is going to look like from a ledger standpoint, right? These are my true metrics that I can expect to see in the year 2024. Again, remember the other data points that I had, that was the actual data that was coming from the past year or, or more. And it's using that data to set up patterns and projections based on historical information. So the more data that we can feed it, just like anything else, especially with AI, the better and more accurate it's going to be. But you saw with just a few clicks and just a, a, a few entry points and, and data points, I can start to see what the true impact this is going to have on my revenue, on my margin, because uh, I can start to play with this too. I can start to add other um, projections and, and constraints and other assumptions uh, so that I can really curate this data to have a very uh, quantifiable and confident uh, level, confidence level in my decision making. Okay, with that, I'm going to bring it back to the session. We are going to have Michael cover a little bit on prescriptive process mining, and then I want to open it up to questions. So, Michael. Perfect, Jared. And, and so from a prescriptive perspective, you know, what Jared's just covered is he, he's looking at it from a business analyst. When you think about process mining, you know, understanding, you know, how your processes flowing from a data-driven perspective where the root cause is hidden inefficiency exists, you know, it, it really is looking at it from a business analyst perspective where prescriptive process mining it's leveraging the the gen ai capabilities and and that underlying ai machine learning to really assist the business user so what's happening is the business analyst needed to understand a lot about the process what questions to ask kind of where to go and search for information and from a business perspective Prescriptive process mining, the new Gen IA capability underlying that is really, if I'm a business user, I don't have to understand my process. When Jared showed you earlier about the data being loaded, once that data is loaded, I can go in and create a new report. It's automatically going to surface, you know, where my top issues are that I'm, ha that I'm having, what the root causes of those are and the recommended path forward. So these are some of the things that prescriptive process mining and being able to leverage Gen AI as a, as a background capability are really coming into play. And so with that said, I just, you know, when we think about the types of insights that we're, we'll be able to leverage from this to enhance the planning and analytics and, uh, and even the Cognos capabilities is, you know, astronomical in, in a sense here. So. We, we really, and I'm, we just put this uh, slide together recently, but it, what it's doing is just in an outline, kind of covering the, the area from gaining the insights you need, you know, everything to what actions to take from a business user. So you don't necessarily always have to involve the, the analyst side of the house. 
So with that said, Jared, I'll go ahead and turn that back over to you. Perfect. Yeah, it's exciting where this is going, and you can see the synergy and the comp and how it complements the the things that that planning analytics is doing. Where planning analytics is more on the predictive of the financial and business impact. What we're looking at here is predicting the process efficiency impact. Right, a bit of a nuance, but they are different considerations, and that is where we see that line between them. But of course, there is a lot of synergy between the tools as well. So yeah, so with that, we're gonna wrap things up. Um, I encourage you to get in touch with us. Uh, there's a QR code on this. If you scan that, you, it'll be take, take you to my uh, calendar booking site, uh, or you can get in touch with one of us through email that you see on the screen now. Uh, and with that, let's maybe open it up for questions. Just looking at the chat, I do not see any questions. So we'll give it another minute and then uh, let you all go. But yeah, so again, this is just scratching the surface. This is just one area that we're focused on for, uh, for process mining, uh, but it's very exciting because now that IBM has taken these different technologies and put them under one umbrella, under the data and AI umbrella, I think there's gonna be a lot of potential here, a lot of integration points uh, and, and we're already seeing a lot of success with our clients uh, in, in integrating the, these different um, these different platforms. So I think with that, we're going to close the session. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, a recording will be made available um, following this and uh, have a great week. <laughs>